does your confession prove that you are saved, that you are a saved Christian? I have been called out recently by some people saying that I have the spirit of Antichrist because I have never on my channel publicly confessed confessions that are in the scripture. So the beginning of this video, I'm just going to go over these verses and state my confession so that people can just drop this whole thing. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? There's the statement. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? I believe that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh, I do it on this. Verse 3. This is Paul speaking. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Lord. Okay, Jesus is the Lord. Not very difficult. Um, now, I just want to say something here. It says, the Lord. Jesus is the, the Lord. The Lord. Okay, the new versions take out the, and they say, Jesus is Lord. Okay, it, the Bible doesn't say Jesus is Lord. Now, Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 11, however... Uh, I'll start in verse 10. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, so here it says Jesus Christ is Lord. It doesn't say the Lord. Now, so are we going to say that Paul had the spirit of Antichrist because he, he left out the word the? Or that he wasn't saved because he left out the word the? You know, Jesus Christ is the Lord. I mean, how far are we really going to take this? You know, you have to say these verses exactly the way it's written, otherwise you're lost or something. Okay. Now, the question is, the problem that's are, that has come up now is some people are stating that only a truly saved person can form these words with their mouth. Jesus is the Lord, number one, and Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, number two. They're saying that only a saved person can make that statement. Now, if you're going to believe that, then what you are saying is anybody who can make that statement, one of those two statements, Jesus is the Lord, or Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. If somebody can make that statement, then you are saying that they are 100% a saved person, born again. Okay, no question, they're going to heaven. You don't have to judge anything else. It doesn't matter what gospel they preach. It doesn't matter what they believe about repentance or calling on the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter. If they can say those words, then they are saved. And I would think if you're truly saved out there watching this video, you would agree with me that that is absurd. And that's not what the purpose of these verses is for. Okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's talk about Paul. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, same book as chapter 12, verse 3, same book, 1 Corinthians, written by Paul, same writer, okay? If Paul really wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 as some kind of a test to where only a, a saved person can, can form those four words with their mouth, Jesus is the Lord, if that's somehow some kind of test that he made up, look at chapter 2 in 1 Corinthians, verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Testimony. Interesting. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. The only thing he wanted to know from the Corinthians 
was the gospel. He wanted to make sure that they knew what the gospel was. Now, see, Paul wasn't very smart because he had this test to where he would know if somebody is saved or not, right? If they could just come up to him and say, Jesus is the Lord, then they're saved. I mean, what what's it matter if they preach the right gospel or anything like that? You see how ridiculous this is? It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at uh, first, or I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six, talking about Paul after he was saved, the things that he went through um, through his sanctification, through his Christian life. Verse twenty-six, Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. See, again, why would Paul be around false brethren if he had this test where he could know if somebody is saved or not? See, only a saved person can say Jesus is the Lord, right? No. And we're going to see why that is in here in just a few minutes. I'm going to try and keep this as short as I can because I know if it's long, people aren't going to watch it. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Uh, just, it's just the next page in my Bible, which probably is in yours too. Ch chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Okay, why is Paul telling Christians to examine themselves? Are they supposed to go in a, look in a mirror at themselves and say, Jesus is the Lord. Oh, I, I can say it, I'm saved. No, that's not the case. The case is, he's saying, it's, it's going with the verse that talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know? Salvation is the most important decision a person makes in their life. And he's saying, you need to make sure that you're saved. Now, if he had these tests, you know, to know if a person's saved or not, wouldn't he have told them? See, people are making way too big of a deal out of something. Um, let's look at 1 John chapter 2. So let's look at uh, John. A lot of these tests, the things that the confessions I read in the beginning, are written by the Apostle John in 1 John. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, see, John, again, John had this same similar type of thing. He had this test where he could prove if a person has the spirit of God or the spirit of Antichrist. If a person could just simply say, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, there you go. The person is saved. The person is a, a born-again Christian, right? No, but... They went out from us. Why would they have ever been with him if they couldn't pass this confession, this, this proof test? See, this is, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, my question is, where is the gospel in these tests, in 1 John and in 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Where, where is the gospel mentioned in these tests? If we're just going to meet random strangers, and they claim to be a Christian, and you say, can you pass... Can you read 1 John 4, verse 2? Can you read 1 John 4, verse 15? Can you read 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3? If they can't, if they start stumbling over their words or something, oh, you're lost. Or if they try and quote it from memory and they slip up and they make a mistake, oh, you're lost. No, that's not, that's not what we're supposed to do as Christians. Um, and the gospel, your testimony, a person's testimony is the best thing to show if you're dealing with a truly saved person or not. Why? Because they're going to testify of the true gospel of repentance to salvation. They're not going to talk about their water baptism or, I mean, what else do people trust in? Their good works. I mean, keeping the Sabbath or something. They're not going to talk about that. They're going to testify of the true gospel. And I am saying it is way easier for a person to say four words, Jesus is the Lord, it's way easier to fake that than to fake a testimony that talks about when you were a wicked sinner 
and you realized you were going to hell, and when you heard the gospel, and you believed the gospel, and you confessed with your mouth, which I'm going to read here in a minute, and you called out to the Lord as a broken sinner for salvation. You don't get that in these confessions. So if people are really going to use these confessions for, um, how do I want to say it, like rules to fellowship with them, without hearing an actual testimony, what they believe doctrinally, that's, this is really dangerous to take these tests this way. The Apostle Paul did not take these tests this way. The Apostle John did not take these tests this way. So, um, so you say, but these verses say, if a man says it, then they have the Spirit of God. They must be saved, okay? Uh, let's compare Scripture with Scripture. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. Okay? A lot of uh, truly saved brethren out there know that a lot of false converts have called upon the name of the Lord. Okay? We know that they have you know, prayed a prayer of salvation or something, but they don't understand their sin. They don't understand what they're praying for. They don't understand why they need to be saved. Okay? So none of us truly saved people out there that believe the right uh, gospel believe in either quick, easy believism or quick prayerism. You know, just praying, repeat after me a prayer. I mean, we don't believe that. Okay? Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, actually, I'm going to read verse 13 first. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? If that's all this chapter said, then okay. Let's look at the pretext of that verse. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so comparing verse 13 with verse 9 and 10, what is, what is required for salvation? I mean, as far as if you know you're a sinner and that kind of thing. If you're at that point, what is required? What is required is uh, a, a knowledge in your heart, understanding, a true understanding in your heart, the gospel, and confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, praying to the Lord, confessing to the Lord that you're a sinner. You know, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Okay, it's both. You have to confess with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart. These tests are no different. I don't understand why this is so difficult for people to understand. You compare scripture with scripture. A true confession comes from a true heartfelt um, understanding in the heart. I mean, anybody can anybody can just say four words. And I don't understand. <laughs> it just blows my mind that this is so difficult for people to grasp. Um, I just want to end with one verse here. Actually, I'll read a couple more verses. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Like I said, people are holding these confessions above, their, above a person's testimony. Well, a testimony can be faked. These confessions can be faked. I mean, if you really don't believe it after these verses I've gone over, I, I don't understand why you're holding on to this so hard. You know, just can't let it go. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. He's not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel. Paul constantly talks about the gospel. The gospel. He does not talk over and over about passing tests or challenges in the scripture to prove, to prove one's salvation. You know, He talks about putting off the old man and putting on the new man. You know, talking about being born again, you know, which a person would talk about in a testimony, not in a confession. The thing is, is that no truly born Christian is going to have any problem confessing these, making these confessions and meaning it. And I would contest that no lost person would have an issue repeating Jesus as the Lord. I mean, that's just, <laughs> call me crazy, but uh, that's just me. Uh, the last verse I want to turn to is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Verses 3 and 4. Um, yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. 
If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. So we have professing brethren on YouTube who are um, just analyzing people's confessions of these antichrist tests. Okay, first of all, the word tests is not in scripture, and as far as I know, the word challenge is not in scripture. I could be wrong on that one, but I know the word test is not in scripture. Um, so were these things ever meant to be a test, for to test another person's salvation? No, absolutely not. But that's exactly what this is. It's a doctrine. It's a strife. It's a strife of words that has come up. Um, and it just blows my mind. So for all the people out there who say, oh, he won't, he's afraid to confess, you know, these confessions, the Antichrist challenge and things. I read the verses, and I, as far as I know, I made no mistakes. I'm sure if I did, I'll hear all about it in the comments. So uh, that's all going to, that's going to be it for this video, I think. I don't think I had anything else I wanted to say, but... Anyways, thanks for watching.